Hello everybody and welcome to this uh, new uh, session of the Digital Classicist Berlin seminar. Um, the second one in the vegan house of the Deutsches Archaeologisches Institut. I remind you that the next one will be in two weeks in the Topoi house, always here in Dahlem. And uh, a couple of announcements before we start with the talk as usual. Uh, first of all, let me remind you that the seminar is recorded, like the other ones, and you can find them uh, almost, almost on time uh, and updated with the very last seminar. Um, and uh, the talk will be structured with a presentation uh, that will last about 40 minutes, and after that there will be uh, enough time for, uh, for a discussion, and the discussion too will be recorded after we moved from, uh, to a more informal session of question uh, and answer that will not be recorded, hopefully, with, uh, with wine and some uh, nibbles. Uh, there is an attendance list here that is circulating. Sign uh, to confirm your presence. Uh, and that being said, uh, it's time for me to introduce uh, the talk of today. Today's talk will be uh, authored by uh, Tariq Youssef and Chiara Palladino and will be presented by Tariq. Both of the authors are from the University of, uh, of Leipzig. And uh, today's talk is dedicated to presi present uh, e -align uh, I Aligner, a uh, tool for syntax based intra language text alignment. So, without much ado, I leave the room to the uh, presenter. Hello everybody, my name is Tarek Youssef, um, I am a computer scientist, I'm working with Chiara Palladino, which is a classicist uh, on this tool, and our professor Grigor Crane supervision. Chiara couldn't come, um, so I will present uh, the tool, so the focus today will be on the digital part of the tool more than the classic part. Uh, maybe the title of the, the tool is very complex a tool for syntax-based intra-language uh, uh, text alignment. So we'll see first of all what is text alignment. Text alignment is uh, conversion between two or more parallel text. Uh, parallel text, that means we have uh, two texts, maybe one of them is translation to the other or the two texts or, uh, are related somehow, one of them is uh, another edition of the first one. So we will see the meaning of parallel in the next slides. Uh, it tries to find uh, the correspondence uh, and the uh, uh, differences between this uh, parallel text. Uh, it's one of the most important tasks in the natural language processing. processing. Uh, uh, we will see how we can perform it uh, automatically. So, first of all, uh, intra-language alignment. Uh, the alignment could be uh, between two texts from the same language. That means the first uh, sentence or the first text and the second text are in the same language. In this case, we have the intra-language alignment. For example, aligning the, <coughs> the many translation of the Bible uh, as we know, we have multiple, many translations aligned to, to see the similarities and the differences between them. And we have the cross-language alignment when we have two, two different languages. As we can see in this image, it's aligned between uh, Persian and uh, English. Uh, uh, cross-language alignment is very, very important because it, uh, can help us to create training data for automatic tra uh, automatic translation uh, systems. Uh, but doing this alignment automatically uh, is not easy. So always to, 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 to align uh, this type of text, we need training data. For example, to align uh, English and Persian, we need training data to make the alignment uh, automatically. Uh, so alignment can be done also manually or uh, automatically. Uh, we have uh, Persites and Alpheus, these two online tools we can, uh, 
we can use them to, to make the manual alignment. Uh, they are really very useful. You can just open the website, paste your text on start, align them. And then when you finish, you can export the results in, in many formats, XML or JSON, to reuse them in other uh, projects or other tools. So, alignment, we can, we can distinguish between two types of, uh, of alignment according to the number of sentences or number of texts that we want to align. Pairwise alignment, when we have only two sentences or two texts, uh, we call it pairwise alignment. When we call it multiple alignment, when we have more than two texts, three, four, or unlimited number of, uh, of parallel texts. For example, this is the alignment of four texts aligned by our tool, iAligner. So the visualization of uh, alignment, uh, al the aligned text could be visualized as a table, vertical or horizontal table, as you can see, or it could be presented as a graph where we have nodes and uh, arrows. As we, for for example, in the image above, we have we can see A, B, C. That means we have the sentence A, sentence B, sentence C. When we have the nodes, which are, for example, the first node, it is uh, overlapping between A, B, C, where the three sentences have the and the second word uh, is quick. It's, it's only uh, exists in the first sentence a. Uh, so we can read the sentence according to the notes and arrows. This, uh, this graph is extra extracted from the Colatex website. It's uh, also an online tool. Or we can present the results of alignment as we can see in this uh, graph. This tool called, called uh, Travis is, it is created by Dr. Stefan Jenke from Leipzig also. He's working for Institute for Informatic. Or we can show the, uh, the results in, as uh, matching segments. In this case, this tool also called CatView is from uh, University of Halle or the dynamic visualization created by Valerio Magarelli. So, what's the goal of alignment? Why we align uh, text? First, maybe we need to highlight uh, the correspondences in different versions of the text or highlight the divergences across various versions of the same text as you can see, establish relations between witnesses of a text and see where they overlap and where they diverge. Or it is like a philological practice, collateral detection and transcription of variance in witnesses that uh, usually done automatically, uh, sorry, manually. It's made by close reading each witness and comparing the text with each other using uh, pen writing line under words to see the differences. So this work is done manually or recensio to establish relationship uh, between witnesses and which one peer the best text. Like we can, as you can see, we can build a tree of witnesses or critical editions so this part is the classic part of, uh, of the presentation. Now, we can do some of these things automatically. Now we will present how we can do the alignment automatically. It is our tool, eAligner. The, the tool is available under this URL, eAlignment.com. On the, 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 the Python implementation of this tool, is available uh, on GitHub. Uh, we are working now to make it available as a uh, desktop application and uh, command line. Uh, uh, also, it will be available in BHP on Java. So 
We, the, the work is in progress. It's not fi finished. Uh, we just started three months ago. So we are still in the first steps of the project. Yeah, the tool is automatic. It performs the alignment automatically instead of manual alignment. So it's syntax based. So uh, the tool uh, takes an account only the order of the words and order of the characters. It doesn't uh, use any uh, morphological uh, information like uh, lemma or part of speech or other things. It's just uh, focus on the order of the words and order of the characters. Intra language, as, as I said, that it talks with text in the same language, Greek, Greek, uh, Latin, Latin, English, English. On this tool is work for pairwise uh, alignment on, mar on multiple, multiple alignment. So for two sentences or more than three, four, five, uh, we, we use Nidelman Wunsch algorithm to, to create the, the pairwise alignment. So this, this uh, algorithm is very famous in bioinformatics field. Uh, first, it's created to align protein and nucleotide sequences. It uses uh, use dynamic programming uh, uh, style to find the optimal uh, solution, to find the optimal alignment between, because we might have um, different uh, solutions, but we different alignment of the same text, especially when we have long text. text. So we, but we want to find the best alignment or the optimal alignment. The idea of dynamic programming depends on dividing the large problem into, into a series of uh, smaller problems and then uh, use the solution of uh, these smaller prob problems to reconstruct the solution to the larger problem. Uh, dynamic program always uh, need, uh, needs a score function uh, to evaluate uh, or to, to calculate the distance. So we will present now the, the score function score function that we, we have used and the similarity matrix. The idea of Needle, Needleman Wunsch algorithm, for example, if we have two, I will explain the algorithm by example. If we have two sentences, I selected very short sentences, otherwise it would take 30 minutes just to explain the algorithm. So these uh, two texts are are extracted from the Bible, from John chapter one, verses one. It's from the New, uh, the New Living Translation and the uh, King James uh, version. So, first we put the two sentences in the in the form of two-dimensional arrays. Uh, we will uh, fill this array or this matrix with values depending on this, uh, this relation or, or this uh, equation. Uh, we use the score function, it takes three parameters. If matching, we, the, the value of matching is five. The value of mismatching is minus five. And insertion deletion is minus two. I will mention, I will explain these values again in the next slides. Here we fill the first line with, uh, as we can see here, the first, uh, first uh, row with uh, uh, the insertion deletion value minus phi uh, multiplied by the order of the word in the sentence, minus two, minus four, minus six, and the same for the first column. Now we will start filling the table or the matrix. Uh, you will look to fill each uh, cell. We need to look to the cell before and cell above and cell with the same uh, diagonal. Uh, yeah. So, and uh, here we will look, we'll take the max value between uh, the, uh, the, the, the cell before uh, 
added to it the matching uh, value or the mismatching value or the, uh, the, the, the cell and the same and the same column above with the insertion deletion, uh, deletion value or the, the cell before uh, added to the insertion deletion value. Then we also keep the, the direction from where this value is, value is derived. As you can see, the, we have in, in, we have matching uh, case here in this, uh, in this case. So the value of this uh, cell is derived from zero. Zero uh, plus f uh, matching value, which is five. Uh, we continue filling the table. We have now the and the, so the, the value of this cell will be five plus five. <coughs> Here, beginning and beginning. We continue filling the table, and at the end, we will find the the dis distance between two these two sentence sentences at this cell at the uh, bottom down, bottom right uh, uh, cell. Now we will go back to to find the optimal alignment. As you can see, this, this value is derived from here, this value is derived from here, and we can trace back to the first cell. So at the end, we can find the solution in this way in the beginning. Here we have was, in the second sentence has no correspondence in the first sentence. We call it gap in this case, and uh, already and existed are has no correspondences in the second sentences. On the first uh, here we have full stop and comma. They are misaligned, or mi we have here in this case mismatching. The modification to to our algorithm. If we have two long uh, texts. One of them is, for example, 1,000 uh, tokens on the second 1,000 tokens. That means we have a uh, uh, matrix with 1 million cells. In this case, we, each word in, this, in the first sentence should be aligned to all, it should be compared uh, to, all sentence, uh, to all tokens in the second uh, uh, sentence. And to, to reduce the search space, in this case, we uh, decided to compare the word number i in the first sentence to a range of tokens in the second sentence from e minus k to i plus k tokens in the second language. In this case, instead of comparing the word to n, uh, to n uh, tokens, we uh, compare it to 2k plus 1 tokens but we have k is smaller than n, half n. So the reduction of the search space is from n multiplied by m to nk, 2k plus uh, 1 multiplied by m. As you can see in this case, we have two, two texts. The word there in the first uh, text, uh, we don't need to compare it to all tokens in the second uh, text. We just take a range of tokens and compare this word to, to, to them. Here we choose k is 14. Uh, the n, the, long, uh, the length of the text, the first text is uh, uh, one, uh, uh, 134. The length of the second uh, text is 157. So the, uh, the search space in the original algorithm was, should be m multiplied by n, what about 21,000 uh, uh, conversion. But after modification, we have only 3,886 uh, 3, uh, conversion. So the reduction of the search space uh, make the algorithm uh, faster and faster, especially when we have long text. Maybe if we have uh, short uh, sentences from zero to from one to one hundred tokens, we don't see 
a big diff uh, a big uh, uh, improvement in the algorithm. But uh, when we have a long text, we 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 will see the difference. On the value of k is not uh, is it is exper experimental. That depends how much the two texts are similar, or if we have uh, like uh, gaps, uh, some missed parts in this text that. Uh, this part is exists in the first text and not exist in the second text. So in this, in this, uh, for example, in the uh, when we uh, compare the Bible translations, we know that each sentence has some uh, some parallel sentence in the second uh, in the other side. So we can choose k uh, with a small value, but if we have uh, Mm, we don't have any information about that text. In this case, we should use a big value or large value for k. Uh, now, I talked about the pairwise alignment. Now, we will talk about multiple alignment. The multiple alignment when we have more than two sentences. The idea of multiple alignment, we have the work is in progress. The, we finished the first part, which is pairwise alignment, and it's uh, online, we can use it, but the multiple alignment is still um, in progress. Something is online, but uh, it's, it's not working perfectly, so we need to optimize uh, our uh, algorithm. So we can choose between two types of uh, algorithms, either progressive alignment or iterative alignment. I will present the differences between them Progressive alignment uh, build uh, the final uh, alignment by combining pairwise alignments, beginning with the most similar pair and progressing to the most distantly related. This type of uh, alignment requires a uh, 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 white uh, tree. That means we need to cluster the sentences if, for example, if we have five sentences, we need uh, first to make a tree uh, to find the most similar uh, sentences. Then we start to align them. So we, we have to cluster them, for example, using a neighbor joining algorithm, as you can see. So the first step to cluster the sentences, here we can see that the sentence one with sentence uh, three are more related than we they are related to sentence two on sentence five with se sentence four. So we start with by aligning sentence one and sentence three. Then the, uh, the result is aligned to the sentence <coughs> two and sentence four with sentence, sentence five aligned together. And the result of them is aligned to the results of S1, S2, S3. Uh, this is... Uh, the progressive alignment, so it needs to create the GUI tree before we start the alignment. Then the iterative alignment, it just start with to align the first sentence with the second sentence. Then the result of them is aligned to the, th the third sentence. The result of them aligned to the fourth sentence. So in this case, we don't need clustering uh, as a first step. But the idea, the progressive alignment, uh, produces uh, a better result, more accurate result than iterative alignment. The iterative alignment is faster than uh, the progressive because uh, it uh, doesn't need uh, clustering or to cluster the sentences before we start the alignment. Now, uh, how we can use our tool? The tool, as I said, it's available online. You just need to copy and paste your text. Just uh, organize them. As you can see, the first sentence with its parallel, uh, at, uh, with uh, uh, the first group, they are uh, split by uh, line break. So then you can choose the alignment options. As we can see here, ignore non-alphabetical, ignore diacritics, case sensitive on Levenstein distance, or you can upload uh, your files if you have uh, if, uh, 1,000 or 2,000 sentences and don't want to 
copy and paste them, you can just upload the, your file, as you can see. Now the, the tool accepts uh, only text and CSV files, <laughs> but we are going to extend it to accept uh, JSON and uh, XML files. Now, this uh, the ref refinement uh, criteria ignore non-alphabetical it's clear that ignore symbols and everything is not alphabetical punctuation numbers on case sensitive uh, in some languages we have uh, small and capital letter on on in other languages we don't have this uh, case sensitive like arabic and uh, hebrew i guess ignore diacritics yeah also this this option options are language uh, dependent so for for example, for the Greek language, we have specific options for Latin. We have another options for Arabic, for Hebrew, for Persian. So the next step is to make language dependent options. If so, if you want to align, uh, for example, English, you have specific options for English, for German, for Greek, for each language, you have uh, some specific options. Then the Levenstein distances uh, uh, applies a revised version of Levenstein algorithm to increase uh, the tolerance threshold on the alignment of similar words. Yeah, the Levenstein distance is a metric to calculate the distance between two words. So it's uh, the minimum number of uh, single character edits, insertion, deletion, and substitutions required, required to change one word into other. For example, uh, the Levenstein distance between these two words, Hellenicus and Hellenicus, is two because we have K in the first word and C in the second one, and we have O and U. So if we want to move from first word to the second word, we have to make two substitutions. So in this case, we, we say that the Levenstein distance between these two words are, uh, is two. Mathematically, the Levenstein distance is given in this, uh, in this equation. But uh, the idea, the, the, the general Levenstein uh, distance uh, has no tolerance. Uh, it's not uh, very helpful in our case because it is binary. So that means either yes, uh, zero or one. Uh, there is no tolerance with the uh, errors produced by OCR or transcriptions or transcription. Sometimes the OCR makes error between N and M, uh, between uh, P and D, P. So in this case, uh, we cannot say that the difference between uh, uh, Hellenicus and Hellenicus 2. We, we, ma we made a group of uh, of uh, characters that are similar, for example, E, I, and Y. So the differences in this case are uh, 0 0.15. If, if it finds I in the first word and Y in the second word or E, it gives 0 0.15 instead of uh, 1. I mean the penalty in this case. On the same for C, K, and D, Q. S, C, M, N. We have a big list of these, uh, these groups. So instead of have, having uh, uh, the Levenstein between Hellenicus and Hellenicus after uh, revising the algorithm is 0 0.3, which gives the real distance between these two words. It's not. After that, we normalize the, the distance by dividing this value uh, to the length of the words. For example, we hear the length of Hellenicus is one, two, three, four, five. It's about nine words, so we divide 0 0.3 to nine to have the, uh, the similarity or the distance between these two words. <coughs> Here we can, we can see the, the algorithm, a Greek text with, uh, with, uh, without uh, any a refinement criteria, just uh, uh, the general 
algorithm we can as you can see the green the green uh, color that means we have matching the yellow color that means we have gap that something is existed in the in one sentence or not exist in the second one on the uh, red color that mean, means we have mismatching here after uh, selecting uh, the refinement uh, criteria as you can see here we have the uh, Levenstein, these two words are, it's the same sentence, uh, the same uh, uh, text, but with uh, selecting, uh, Leven allowing uh, Levenstein distance, here it detects uh, two similar words. Here we have uh, uh, also matching after removing the diacritics, and uh, yeah. So uh, the output, uh, as I said, it's uh, when we have deep green, that means uh, we have completely aligned tokens, uh, tokens aligned by exclu excluding case sensitivity or punctuation detection, which with light green, gaps, yellow, on the, the divergence, uh, divergences uh, with red, on tokens aligned by applying Levenstein distance, the blue green. Mm -hmm. So what can we do with E-Aligner? Some case studies, manuscripts uh, alignment. Uh, here we run our uh, tool on uh, a three, uh, three manus manuscripts. It's Plato Scritos, uh, uh, one is from Clark, Paris, and Tübingen. And we aligned the, the, whole, uh, the whole text that we have This uh, diacritics is not the same. Yeah. For example. Then OCR output alignment. Uh, if we have uh, uh, book OCR with uh, uh, many OCR engines, they don't produce always the same uh, results. So if we have uh, uh, multiple OCR of the same uh, source, we can mirror the results, uh, like here, uh, align the results on to find the points of. Uh, similarities as uh, if I can show you this here we have for example at this point we have Kai and Kai with something detected or created by OCR here we have in the first sentence uh, uh, white space here we have these points so we can mirror the results of OCR and uh, then these errors can be uh, corrected manually or using some automatic correction uh, uh, systems. Or, uh, yeah, here also we have uh, corrected the Partologia Latina. Uh, there are uh, an OCR version and there are the uh, correct version. Here we have the, the, alignment, the, the alignment between the OCR one and the, the correct one. And here we have the statistics, the length of the sentence is not aligned, it's only here. <coughs> For example, here is, yeah, here we have this speed, yeah, this word x is on history is uh, split it here, there are one word. So the tool detects every difference. Here we have on one word is in the OCR, they are replaced with the uh, question marks because maybe they are not recognized at all. So alignment also of edition three, editions of Askylos uh, are aligned using the our tool, you can also yeah. 
you can see the alignment and also you can use the remove GR code. And you can see the differences between between the results. Then the future work, as I said, we will extend the import and export options by accepting more uh, file formats like uh, JSON and uh, XML. And also for uh, export option, now you just you can just uh, open the website and see the results and save them as image, but you cannot uh, save them as XML or JSON. So the next step is uh, to improve this point to to give more freedom for exportation and they make uh, lang sorry make uh, language uh, dependent language uh, options as i said for latin for greek for arabic now we have the general options like uh, ignore non alphabetical on levenstein on the uh, case sensitivity on the the big problem is crossing and transpositions uh, we need to deal with this problem uh, so that is this point in our plan for the next two or three months. We hope that we can achieve, uh, we can solve these problems. And at the end, thank you so much for your attention. And I hope that I could cover the, the problem in a good way. Thank you.